Good morning. It's time for Daily Chapel. The text is Matthew chapter 9, verses 1 through 8. The Reverend Dr. Brian Saunders is preaching. The broadcast of Chapel is underwritten by LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces. Our text for today's chapel is from the Gospel of St. Matthew, the ninth chapter. Getting into a boat, Jesus crossed over and came to his own city. And behold, some people brought to him a paralytic lying on a bed. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Take heart, my son, your sins are forgiven. And behold, some of the scribes said to themselves, This man is blaspheming. But Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Why do you think evil in your heart? For which is easier to say? Your sins are forgiven, or to say, rise and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He then said to the paralytic, rise, pick up your bed and go home. And he rose and went home. When the crowd saw it, they were afraid. And they glorified God, who had given such authority to men. This is the word of the Lord. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. What do you have to do with us, Son of God? Have you come to torture us? Jesus responds with only one word. His word is go. Go out of these men and into the herd of pigs of which ran to the Sea of Galilee and drowned. Two men now freed from this demonic possession. The town folk were free from the terror that these demoniacs caused. And their thankless response is amazing. Go away, Jesus. Depart from us. You're not helping our economy by taking that of which we would have been able to sell or to consume and ran them into the Sea of Galilee and you exhibit an authority and a power that frightens us what else might you be able to do? Just go away. And so he does. From the eastern shore of the Galilee he boards a boat and he goes to the western shore of the Galilee to Capernaum which was his headquarters for his mission in the Galilee. And there some people bring to him a paralytic carrying him on a mat. A man who could not walk, a man who may not have been able to use his arms and hands, a man who could not go anywhere without someone taking him. And Jesus looks at them and he says, be courageous. Take heart in some translations. Be bold in others. Your sins are forgiven. Now, the thankless response there is quite amazing as well. For there were the scribes who were either mumbling or thinking, but the thinking wasn't the origin. The word used here describes that which begins in the heart and boils its way to the mind and sometimes finds its way out of the mouth. So, your sins are forgiven, he says. Well, you know, only God can forgive sins. So this guy thinks he's God. You see, the demons on the east side of the Galilee actually knew more than the scribes on the west side of the Galilee. He thinks he's God. He can't be God. Jesus simply was exhibiting his omniscience and his power, not only of the created world, but over the fallenness of the created world. You see, he's God who knows everything in the flesh, which means he knows our thoughts. How are you about that? That he knows your thoughts. 
that he knows those things that you and I hope never escape the mouth and yet dwell within the mind which is the recipient of the heart. Well, I suppose we're safe in some sense because we'd never tell Jesus to go away, would we? We wouldn't even think of such a thing. But we have to be honest because he knows our thoughts. It does no good to deny what he knows when he knows what he knows. And what he knows is that Satan whispers into our ears sweet little somethings that from time to time tell Jesus to go away. Jesus, you, the Word of God, you're kind of strict and I like to have fun. I like to enjoy things and it might involve disobeying your Word. So just go away. Go away, away and let me walk the path that I think brings me pleasure and joy, at least for a little while. But he knows our thoughts. Of course, that was on the east side of the Galilee. Let's, let's go to the west side of the Galilee. We would, we would never, ever deny that Jesus is who he claims to be. Of course we would not. Or, or would we? Because remember, he knows our thoughts. And so the sly serpent slides into our ears the notion... Yeah, he's the forgiver of sins. Good thing for those who sin. Not necessarily for me. Because I can point out a whole lot of other sins in other people that are worse than mine. Besides, I have kept a record of the things that I do well. Of the church that I serve. Of the people that I help. Of the kindnesses that I express that others don't. That's got to be worth something. That's got to be valuable in the eyes of he who knows my thoughts. Why doesn't he just stick to those thoughts and give me credit and allow me to earn salvation and the forgiveness of sins? You see, it's kind of a frightening thing, I suppose, that God does know our thoughts. Jesus knows our thoughts. And it is important from this text for us to realize that we are simply the paralytic. We cannot, by our own reason or strength, believe in him. We can't do anything by our own will and our own volition that merits some sort of holy recognition. We're steeped in our trespasses, in our sins, paralyzed toward any righteousness. We can't walk toward God. We can't love Him. Nor can we even love our neighbor by our own will. So how important is it that He comes to us? As He did to the paralytic who was brought to Jesus on that mat. Jesus is saying to that man, take heart, be confident in me and what I'm about to say. Be bold in me, for I am the Son of God. I am God in the flesh. And even though I know your thoughts, it doesn't prevent me from coming to you because that's why I have come. I am the one that all the prophets have spoken about. I'm the one that Israel has been waiting for. And I come with authority. I come with authority from my Father. And I exercise it for your benefit. And here it is. Your sins are forgiven. I can say that. Because in a short period of time, he would be revealing to this paralytic and to those who brought him on that mat, I'm going to bear them. I will bear them in their totality. And I will become 
the paralyzed sinner of all time. I will bear them on my flesh with every whip, with every mockery, with every spike, with every crown, with every spear that enters my body. I bear them and call out to my Father, look upon me with the disdain that they deserve, but make it mine. Make it mine for their sake, and then the consequence of that sin meted out on me to my death. I pay for the sins of everyone. I take possession of what you have earned so that you can possess what I give you. And that is the forgiveness of sins. So get up. Take your mat. It proves that I have the authority to do what I say I do. Take it and walk home. And he did. But it didn't end just in the first century. Those who bore you into life physically carried you, not on a mat, but in their arms and brought you to where Jesus is. They brought you to waters that drown and make alive. We, the blind, dead, and enemies of God, have been splashed with the redemptive waters of holy baptism, where then and there God took us by the hand and said, You belong to me. And I dress you in a holy robe that has not one wrinkle, not one stain, not one blemish. And I put you on a pedestal, and I love you as my bride. I take you unto myself that you may receive what it is that I give and be blessed therein. In those waters of baptism, my friends, you were raised out of your lost condition. And you were given faith to be bold toward, confident in, relying upon the merits of Jesus and Him only, there at that moment in time, God said, your sins are forgiven. And He keeps it up. He keeps coming to you. He comes to you when we are on bended knee, saying before the Lord of the church, the very things that we are embarrassed to hear come out of our mouth. I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto thee all my sins and iniquities, of which I have ever offended thee, and justly deserve thy temporal and eternal punishment, and then we specify them. How embarrassing is that? And yet how wonderful it is that God has established the office of the Holy Ministry. It's an office that belongs to Him. It's an office that He fills for your sake, so that His voice can come to your ears all the way to that heart all the way to that soul and come with these words, my son, my daughter, be of good cheer. Hand laying on your head that you know that he's speaking to you directly. There's no one else in the room except you and your shepherd. Your sins are forgiven. So come and eat. Come to my meal where the very meritorious body and blood of Christ not only sacrificed on the cross, but risen from the dead, standing over all evil, heel crushing Satan's head, silencing his foul mouth, that he cannot make any claims to you anymore at any time. Jesus says, eat and drink of my body, my blood, because therein is the forgiveness of your sins. You are forgiven. All so that one day we can go home, as the paralytic did, but in a more glorious and wonderful way. There'll be a day when Jesus calls us out of our graves and he'll say, my son, my daughter, take your mat, and go home, and we'll go home. We'll go home to that mansion that's prepared for us before the beginning of our acknowledgement of time. 
And we will live in that marvelous, wonderful bliss, worshiping Christ in the most perfect way because our sins are forgiven. Amen. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds on Christ Jesus. Amen. Thank you for joining us for Chapel. The broadcast of Chapel is underwritten by LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces. To learn more about LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces, visit kfuo.org chapel.